Hello, and welcome to this session of working with Microsoft Excel. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a technique that you can utilize to apply conditional formatting to an Excel chart. Let's take a look. So open in front of you, I've got an example file. This is called conditional chart hyphen zero zero. And if you'd like, you can hop on down to the description of this video, just right down below, look for the office new blog post and you'll find a link to download this file so you can follow along with me. Now here's the scenario. Somebody's handed off this nice little table of data to you. It's got two columns, sales individuals and their total sales. Now what they'd like you to do is to create a chart. Okay, I can do that. I can select the data, go to insert, and I can pick my type of chart. Let's say I just go with a default 2D column chart. So I'll select that. Great, now I got a nice little chart there. But now they want you to format the top three highest sales performers within this data. I want those bars, those columns within the chart to stand out, okay? Well, I can get in there and I can highlight the bars. If I grab one, it grabs everybody in the series, but I'll click one more on, on Parker's bar there. With that selected, I'll give it a double click. This will open up my format data point window. I'll go to my fill command, and I'm gonna change the fill from an automatic to a solid fill, and I'll change the little paint bucket color there. Let's say I go with orange. Okay, great, and I can go through and I can do that. Let's see, we're looking at the top three, right? So here's another one, I'll change this one to orange. And I think this one is next. Does that look about right? I think I got the top three performers there. Awesome. I've now changed the color of those bars so they stand out. Well, what happens if they now wanna see the top two performers? Or they wanna see the top four performers? Now the goal here is to make this more dynamic. I wanna make it so that if the top value changes, the chart updates automatically. And I don't have to sit here and manually eyeball it and try to figure out what's the top three sellers, what's the top two sellers, and so on. Automatically for us. Let's take a look at how we can do this. Now I've still got the old chart. I'm gonna get rid of it, select it, hit my delete key, gone. Now, one method that we can use here is by creating what I'm gonna call a helper column. This helper column is gonna utilize a formula that's going to identify the top selling values that we want, whether that's the top two or top three or top four, or whatever it is. So just to the right of my total sales column, I'm gonna create a new column. I'll just call this top sales. You can call it helper, top, whatever you like. Now here, we're gonna create the formula. And this formula is gonna use the if function and the large function. Let's take a look. So I'll say equals if. Now my goal is to determine if this amount right here is greater than or equal to the top three, the top two, the top four sales that we're looking for. So I'm gonna say, if this cell right here, C5, is greater than or equal to, now how do we identify what's the top four sales or top three sales? Well, in steps, the large function. So I'll bring in large, then I'll open up our parentheses. Now, if you haven't used the large function before, its main purpose is to take an array of data, arrange the cells, and return the top two, or top three or top four value that it finds. We specify what top means. Does that mean we wanna see the second highest or the first highest or the third or whatever? So here I'm gonna say the array is this range of cells right here. And I'm gonna make that absolute. I'll hit my F4 key to throw in the dollar signs, comma. And the next thing it wants to know is K. This is where we put in the top two or the top three or whatever it is. So here, I can put in a literal hard, hard value, like I can say three, or I can reference a cell, such as my C2 cell here. Now it's important, we're gonna copy this formula down, I wanna make that absolute. 
F4 puts into dollar signs. I'll close the parentheses. Now that's our if condition. If C5 is greater than or equal to the largest value, in this case, C2, the fourth largest value within that range, comma. If that's true, then I wanna return that value, comma. If it's not true, I'm just gonna put in two quotes. I don't wanna return anything. And I'll close the parentheses. I'm gonna hit my enter key. Now, nothing got returned to me, but if I copy that formula down, it's now looking at that range and it's determining if the active value is greater than or equal to the fourth largest value within that range. If I change that from a four to a three, you'll see my formula update from a three to a two and my formula updates. All right, now let's take this a step further. Now I wanna create my chart. So I'm gonna select that same range of data. I got my B4 to C12, my sales individuals and the total sales. With that highlighted, I'll go to insert, back to my 2D column chart, and I've got my nice little chart. Now here's where the conditional formatting comes into play. Watch this. I now wanna change the color of the bars that are represented by those top two or top three values. Well, my chart doesn't currently include that formula column I just created. But with the chart selected, I can grab the corner there and I can drag it over to include that data. Now you'll see right away, we got some additional bars in there and they're a different color. Well, I don't want the blue bar in there, I want the orange bar or red bar, or whatever it is to be in there in place. Well, what we can do, and this is where that conditional comes into play, is we're essentially gonna take the orange one and put it on top of the blue one. So if I select the orange one here, that's selected, I'm actually gonna give it a double click. Let's make sure that both bars are selected. Inside the format data series, I'm gonna to go to the last option here, the series options, and there's a series overlap, which is currently at negative 27%. Well, you'll notice as I drag that bar, they're either getting further away from one another or I can pull it all the way to the right and they're immediately stacked on top of one another. What do you think of that? So here, if I now change that value, let's say I go from a two to a three, hit my enter key, the chart updates. I go from a three to a four, the chart updates. I go to two, I just wanna see the top two sellers. What do you think? How cool is that? So now we really don't need the top sales. We need the values because they're part of the chart, but I don't want users to see it. So if I select column D, I'm gonna right click on it, go to hide. We'll, rem Ooh. we'll remove that, but our chart just said, where did the data go? A little simple fix here. If I right click on the chart, I'm gonna go down to select data. And inside the select data source window, there's an option for hidden and empty cells. If I select that, I wanna turn on the option show data in hidden rows and columns. So I'll activate that, I'm gonna hit okay. I'll hit okay again. And now I got my fancy little chart. The column's hidden, it's still there. We can always unhide it. And now our chart can see it. So make sure you trade this out, right? Get down into the description of this video. Look for that file, the office new blog post. They find the file in there, you can download it, you can follow along with me, you can practice this concept, and better yet, you can practice it on your own data if you got it. And while you're down there in the description, if you enjoyed this video, you learned something new, make sure you give me a thumbs up, let me know you enjoyed it, and if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notifications about new videos that we upload to this channel. All right, I hope you enjoyed this one, you learned something new, I'll see you in the next video.